Can you guys hear me? Do I sound like Mark's fellow? No? I sound good? Hey, it's hot. Oh, tough crowd already. Good. <laughs> What's up, Elton? How are you? Hi. Um, so, I'm Jeremy, and I'm here from Grindr. Uh, a little bit about Grindr very quickly. So, Grindr is one of the original apps in the App Store. We uh, launched uh, when the uh, uh, iPhone 2 came out, when it had GPS capability, and our CEO and founder, Joel Simkai, was a guy who didn't have a ton of social skills, was like, how do I need game users around me? I got an idea. So, he paid a guy $5,000, they made this app. Stephen Fry mentioned it on Top Gear. And all of a sudden it got huge. Uh, we haven't had a marketing department until about six months ago, but we're currently running with about 1 million concurrent users worldwide, 196 different countries, exchanging 85 million messages across the world. It's huge. Um, and so our success came in the fact that we found a user problem that needed to be solved. Um, uh, an otherwise um, invisible minority looking for people, looking for their community around them. And so that is where we got right there. Aha! So we got men seeking men to connect around the world without our men seeking men to matter where they are. And so that's great. So that's got us uh, to this point where we've got a huge user base, we've got a huge wealth of data. We recently got a $93 million investment from uh, China, from uh, uh, Beijing Kulu Tech, um, which is our first source of outside investment in the past seven years. And so what does that mean to us? Well, $93 million is really going to help us do the same thing, it's gonna help us push our geospatial technology forward. And just to uh, make a note of this, Brenner actually invented geospatial technology. So if any of y'all are on Tinder, or you're on any of those other products, you can thank us, that's okay. <laughs> so we hold the patent for geospatial technology, taking what's around you on your phone and putting it into a cascade in, in your space. So that's where our success was. And so now with this $93 million investment, what we're looking to do is we're looking to serve our user base by answering new questions for them. Like, who should I meet? Something we're already doing. What should I do? Where should I go? What should I buy? Also, I, I did read there's not supposed to be any PowerPoint, so I'm like the loser that first came up with a PowerPoint slide because we're not going to have this when I swear to God. But, uh, so these are the questions that we're trying to answer. And how are we doing that? We're doing that uh, using our wealth of data technology. So we're not trying to position ourselves as a four square. We're not trying to cater to businesses or corporate needs. What we're trying to do is help our user solve a problem in their environment by taking data analytics and letting them know where people are. Um, for an example, I guess a comparable would be Google Maps. You guys all use Google Maps, or you use Waze, you go on, you use Waze map. Tell us where there's all those nasty cars uh, on the highway and go around it. Well, those nasty cars for Grindr are actually really great people that you want to hang out with for us. So we're going to tell you where to go, where people are right now, and also be able to trend historical data based on where our users have been over the past seven years, or millions of users, to let you know what's trending. What was hot last week? What's going to be hot next week? You want to go out and have something quiet, but you want to engage with something a little bit busier. We're actually able to merge all of the data analytics that we've collected with the geospatial technology to allow people to find what's around them in real time without a plan. So it is curated experience without the editorial component. There's nobody sitting in a room deciding this is what's cool and this is what's not. This is where you want to go and this is not where you want to go. It's actually users living their life and their experience which are creating this large map of data, this wealth of analytics that allows us to tell people no matter where you are in the world, where you need to be at that time. Now, when we talk about that, where to go, what to buy, what to do, that's very much a North American problem. I mean, Grindr at the end of the day is something very different in other parts of the world. A lot of it is about mobilization, it's about reaching your community, it's about uh, being able to make smart political decisions. So, as an example, one of the things we've done recently is we helped mobilize the LGBTQ vote in Colombia and allow people to learn more information about LGBTQ or LGBTQ positive. Um, candidates in their area. So part of this as well is going to allow people to engage in their community, not from necessarily a commercial or an entertainment aspect, but also to be able to find their community in places where um, it's not safe to be LGBTQ or what we call bad neighborhoods. Um, so all of this 
has allowed us to basically become a lifestyle brand. A lifestyle one-stop shop for people in the gay community to go out, feel comfortable where they are, no matter where they are in the world, whether it's in Thailand, whether it's in Israel, whether it's in Los Angeles, um, and really connect with what's around them in a way that is natural, that is authentic, and that is driven by people like them by just opening up their phone. And now questions. That's what I got. Yeah, yeah, I got a question over here. Oh. Yeah, how, how does it work out for you in countries where there's such repressive regimes that could be uh, very threatening to your community? How are you able to work around uh, governments ordering you to cough up the data and reveal your, uh, your members? We're very lucky that we actually hold very little data on our members. So the neat thing about gay men yeah, is that uh, <laughs> Gay men are all, and Grindr is all about the media, so we don't host a lot of information. So you might remember Ashley Madison at one point had a daily. The one thing about us is the only data that we have is triangulation data, where our users are. Um, we did uh, notice that we did some, have some bad neighborhood governments that were trying to we were triangulate our data. We spent a lot of time in securing those uh, access points, so you cannot, you know, we cannot find something in those bad neighborhoods. Also, when a user goes into a bad neighborhood, they do get a lot of warnings from us letting, us, letting them know where they are, where some safe spaces are, so they can go and enjoy themselves, but still have a relatively safe experience in that, in that place. Well, this is easy. I've never had to answer this so long. Uh, I've got a question, actually. Uh, yeah. You were mentioning that uh, you guys have patented the geospatial technology. Uh, can you talk about um, like, what does that actually mean in practicality? Are you able to monetize that in some ways, or is there something beyond just the patent that you I mean, we, we could monetize on it, um, but at the end of the day, um, the nice thing about Grindr is that we found a niche market that we service that nobody else has been able to service as well. And moving forward into geospatial emerging with data technology, there's not another person or company in the market that has the wealth of data that we have on our market. So we don't impose on other companies using what is technically our patent in the market, we welcome them to be in the marketplace. The fact is, is that they just simply are not in a space where they're dealing with the same problems that we are. So come on in and use the technology, but uh, the fact is, is that we've got all of these members, and so we're leaving them out to beyond. Um, so yeah. Hey, what's up? How did you initially um, monetize it? So Brian works on a split uh, revenue model. We have a uh, subscription-based model that allows additional features for users. So they can block extra people, they can send. Uh, other photos, I don't know, landscapes or whatever. <laughs> and, um, and then we do have a small, or we had a small advertising revenue platform that was built on that. Um, in past years, the revenue model, uh, advertising revenue model was about 25% of our revenues. Because of the pioneering work that our sales department has done, it actually now accounts for 40% of our revenues uh, for the company. We have big companies like Diesel, we have Madonna, we have a lot of uh, entertainers and lifestyle products that are now looking to reach our brand because we do have such a, um, a natural connection with our market. Um, it's not forced out of nothing. Here. Anybody? Time for one last question. Dealer. 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 Biggest growth challenge you guys have. Biggest growth challenge. So, um, writers. Growth story is very unusual compared to everybody else's. As I said, Grindr was more of a phenomenon, so it, it met a user need. Um, Stephen Fry mentioned it on Top Gear, a couple of people started mentioning it, and then we basically played the past seven years catching up to technical debt. Um, so our biggest growth issue was being able to scale and being able to scale well. It was really cool that some dude built it in a living room for $5,000, but that $5,000 did not allow us to be able to cater to 7 million users across the world in such a short period of time. Um, so, um, what you might notice, if you happen to use Grindr or if you have a friend that does, uh, we have a new interface that's up here. This has actually been built from scratch. We built a brand new product, engineering front end, uh, engineering back end and front end to be able to scale. It allows us to be able to move forward with large amounts of users. And that should be hitting the market in the next couple of months. It's a beta testing right now. So. All right. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Thank you, Brandon.